In this problem, we're given that a spherical weather balloon, so basically a ball, is being inflated. The radius of the balloon is increasing at the rate of 5 centimeters per second. So this is the given information. I've highlighted in red what the question is. We are to express the surface area, for which they gave me an equation down here for, of the balloon as a function of time. Notice that the formula that we give for surface area is not a function of time. In fact, right now the surface area is a function of r, the radius of the balloon. So since we're given that the weather balloon is spherical, that means that we're dealing with a sphere, or you could think of it as the shape of a basketball. The distance across the entire basketball would be the diameter. The r, however, in our formula is half of the diameter. That's called the radius, so that's this piece here. And as the radius gets bigger, your ball gets bigger, and that makes the surface area of the ball bigger. Since we're supposed to express the surface area not as a function of r, which is given in this formula here, we are expressing it in terms of t. We must take the given equation. Somehow we are to come up with a formula r is equal to some formula that has the letter t in it. It's given that the radius is increasing at a rate of 5 centimeters per second. If it's obvious that this is a linear relationship and you know how to write the equation, then you can write it down and make the substitution and you'll be done. If it's not clear how to relate r and t, start with the table of values. It's assumed that at time zero, the radius would be zero. One second later, since we're saying that t is in seconds, the balloon would be such that its radius is five centimeters. And I know this because the radius of the balloon, as it's being inflated, is increasing at a rate of five centimeters per second. So for every second we wait, the radius of the balloon goes up five centimeters. It was at zero centimeters at time zero, so one second later it'll be five centimeters, and every time you wait one second, so suppose I add one second to this time value, if we're at two seconds, well then the radius will go up five centimeters again. That would bring us to a ball with a radius of 10 centimeters. So this is clearly a linear relationship. Every time time goes up by one second, the radius increases by five centimeters. So if you're used to y equals mx plus b as a formula for a line where m is the slope, we just discovered that our slope would be 5. And then the b in y equals mx plus b is the y-intercept. It's what you get out when you plug in 0. We've already said at time 0, you are to get out 0. So this formula would work, except we're not supposed to use x's and y's in our equation. We're supposed to use t as the input and r as the output. So I'm going to use t instead of x for my input and I'm not going to write the plus zero, and I'm going to use the letter r for my output rather than the letter y. So this is the linear equation that relates time and the radius of my ball. So now where I see the letter r in the formula, I can replace r with 5t, and now what I have is I've expressed the surface area of the ball, or the weather balloon if you will, in terms of not r, but as a function of time. If you feel the need to simplify, then don't forget, because the 5 is in the parentheses, that it's being squared along with the t. So 5 squared is 25, and then the t is being squared. Since 4 times 25 is 100, we can write this as 100 pi t squared. 